Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up? It's time for the Katowice Grand Finals. And we've got Oliveira, the underdog, coming in from the top left side. It's a blue Terran player going for a double gas opening. And he is a big underdog, but he has had fantastic TVT this tournament. And he's actually gotten here to the Grand Finals off the back of his TVT in many parts. Down in the bottom right side, we've got Maru. And he is, of course, the monster on side gaming up against Kaizy Gaming. Now, for those who don't know, Oliveira should have been eliminated in the group stage, some were saying. He only won two matches and lost three. But his two match wins were him defeating Clem and Cure to zero. So he crushed his TVTs and he lost uh, some close Terran vs. Zerg, Terran vs. Protoss matches, unfortunately. But he barely got through because there was a four-way tie between players, all with two wins and three losses each. So hats off to Oliveira for making it through and, uh, and then crushing hero marine in a tvt as well no offense to hero marine but he did now Oliveira here is uh, apparently learning from the korean players he's doing the three ga workers on one gas and none on the other this is what we call calculated inefficiency the reason you do this is if you want to play sub optimally um despite being a deep expert at the game no pro player has ever given a good reason for why you would want to do this since notice these scvs are stopping behind each other and they could be mining uninterrupted on the other side of the map Maru, who's an actual good player, is doing two workers on one, one on the other. Now, now don't get me wrong, guys. It's not just Oliveira that does this. It's Oliveira, Bion, Kiro. Um, the list goes on. It's super, super derpy. He's just losing gas mining for no reason here. It's very lazy, and a lot of players do this recently. I, I'm a big critic of it because it's one of these things where so many details are at such an elite level in 2023, and there's such a basic one, like always rather have two workers on each gas rather than three on one one on the other um as you can always see the third worker mining gas mines a little bit slower than the other ones he's, he's got to stop wait for a second sometimes only half a second before he gets in it's not a massive difference but it's one of those things for pro players who usually pull their mule off before it expires oh speak of the devil maru messed up just lost 25 minerals there from the mineral patch not the end of the world, but just interesting because these pros are usually so consistent at pulling that away. <laughs> it's one of those things which usually you expect them to uh, to not make that mistake. But anyways, moving on to Reaper 3 Hellion for Maru. He went for that quick reactor and it looks like he's playing defensively. Oliveira, on the other hand, he's gone for the Widow Mine after three Reapers and a Hellion and is now building a reactor a little bit later and going for that starport and that factory. Now, are we going to see a quick swap and an immediate Raven or do we see a Cyclone straight away? Looks like Cyclone into second tech lab, pretty standard. And it looks like Maru gonna do tank into Medivac. Maru's gonna play aggressively. I mean, he likes these aggressive build orders, does Maru. It's a good way to leverage your skill and uh, your experience in these situations. Remember going into this grand finals, Maru said, I'm the, I think I'm the best player in the world right now. And that's probably, normally Maru in his interviews is like, uh, I just hope I don't screw up. Uh, I just hope I can play okay. Like, he's normally got these... This is the first time we've ever heard him say, I think I'm the strongest player. He's coming into this very confident, and if you're better than your player, you're meant to beat them. And, of course, they are practice partners. Maru beat him 90% of the time in practice uh, in the weeks leading up to this. So Maru's like, cool, I'm going to put pressure on you. Most players crumble under that aggressive pressure. Gives you less room for mistakes when you're on the defense, right? One small slip up and bam, workers are dying and the game's over. And that's exactly what Maru's looking for. He wants to start this series off in a good way. Let's see if the Cyclone can lock onto the Medivac. Oh, Oliveira with a good move, but unfortunately he locks onto the Hellion on the low ground, not the Medivac. The Medivac would have been the best move. He's going to try and jump on it. The Raven is here. I think Oliveira needs to back off, wait for the tank and pull some SCVs to break this. He's He's going to try and siege his tank right now. Good siege up on his tank. Ooh, he gets a good shot off. Yep, but good movement by Maru as well. Auto turret goes down. Oh, I think that's missed time for Oliveira. The turret goes down. The cyclone goes down. His tank is sieging. Can he at least kill? Oh, no. He pulled his raven back. Lost vision, which is why his tank couldn't get the second shot off on the enemy siege tank. Oh, no. Oliveira not only losing the fight, but also not getting the shot on the siege tank, which is a disaster. Another auto turret does come out. The siege tank will go down. Finally defending this, but man, those Hellion splashies are absolutely brutal. And the Hellion Reaper is still in the base, tearing it up. Gonna pick up those Reapers and boost around, looking for more potential damage. There's even some Marines here that'll join up with the Medivac. Gonna try and unload those, but does pull up and start going the other direction. Eight SCVs going down so far, not to mention those two Siege Tanks uh, trading on both sides. But of course, the units lost have way better for Maru right now as he grabs five, six, six more SCVs. This is disgusting. The siege tank just can't keep up for Oliveira. Finally, he gets there and he's got a tap. That is a devastating 
start to this series where the incumbent favorite, Maru, just applies that pressure and gets a clean, easy victory. Right, that was a rough start to the series, but he's opening double gas again. Down in the bottom right, we've got Oliveira, and he is getting proxy barracks. Oh my god, this is the fastest possible Reaper Rush. Maru is looking to speed run this grand finals right now, guys. He is just going to try and run Reapers up into this main and see what they can do. Now, on this map, they do need to go around this way. So this is not the closest possible proxy, but of course, he's making it a little bit harder to spot. Now, a lot of players will come out with the Reaper. Check to... Excuse me check to about there and then head across the map if Oliveira does that he's screwed <gasps> Oliveira goes reactor first oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> I mean he's got Chris Barracks gas diving but guys reactor first is so vulnerable on small maps if they make a reaper and just send it across the map with a normal build that reaper gets in and kills like two SCVs before your reaper comes out in this case if he builds marines he can have them ready in time but they can get out microed by the reapers um, if he goes for his own Reapers, they're going to be in big trouble. Because if this Reaper goes straight in, Maru crushes. But you know what? Maru did an SCV scout, guys. If that SCV went up the ramp and saw the reactor, he would be in there killing this SCV on the factory and winning the game right now. But Maru is going to wait for two or three Reapers. And that's a problem because he's up against reactor first. He was not expecting a reactor first build. Oliveira's build order actually might pay off because these Reapers, what are they like? 15, I mean, he's still got like 15 seconds to ruin. If he can kill the SCV on the factory, stop that building, then he's going to be way ahead. But oh, the factory does finish just before the SCV goes down. Already two SCVs do fall. Great damage for Maru to start things off. But there's going to be two Reapers out and a Hellion already building. You can lose about five or six SCVs and still be ahead here. As Oliveira, there's three Reapers on top of him, but his second Reaper pops out. Two Reapers and a bunch of SCVs versus this. Maru loses. Oh, he gets five SCV because this is a good start for Maru nonetheless. I thought it would be a straight up win. But uh, it's still a lot of SCV damage. But the Hellion getting out is a bummer. If he had a little bit more time before the Hellion, this would be a very different game. Remember, if he killed that, delayed the factory by five, six seconds, he would have had four Reapers versus two there and would have killed a lot more SCVs. Nonetheless, he is up four workers, but he's got to... Oh my God, he doesn't... kill. The, he's got to kill that. He's got to kill that SCV right now. I can't believe Oliveira didn't cancel the command center. Oliveira was like, well, you know what? You're so busy in my main, I might as well just keep that building. And now that he's got three Reapers, four Reapers, two Hellions, Maru needs to go home. Maru needs to go home or he's going to get rolled. Maru staying on the offense, but no, not against a reactor first build. Maru should know that against a reactor first build, you get your initial damage and then you get the hell out of there because they will outproduce you when they've held this well. And now he loses a Reaper. Of course, one Reaper on each side. But with that reactor pumping out, Oliveira has the same amount of Reaper production and he has the quicker factory. And that is, of course, why he is favored in this situation. Now, Maru is still pumping Reapers, but Oliveira has seen it. So Oliveira is like, well, that's fine. I can afford to just play pretty defensive here. One Hellion for Maru will go around the north side. His command center is about a minute later. And he's got that starport behind it. Cyclone on the way. I mean, Maru's still up five workers, but with the later command center, this orbital almost finished. I imagine the worker count about ends up even, and Maru will have much later orbitals dropping. We've also got to see a Hellion goes down there. Maru does have the advantage of the Barrack Scout, though, which is very nice. He's not going to be surprised by anything that comes out next. Four Hellions, five Reapers. I feel like if Oliveira goes across this map, he might just kill... But no, I mean, Cyclone really turns the fight around, doesn't it? So it looks like he's going to stay defensive for now is Oliveira. He's building a medevac, a tank, and marines. Oh, he says, you know what? We may have more material. Let's use that with a siege tank. Because you know what? Normally pulling SCVs is very good against these tank drops. But if you pull SCVs into that bunch of units, they're just going to get obliterated. They will die so fast. Behind this, a medevac on the way from Maru. That's interesting. So Maru wants to do a Reaper drop. Wow, a seven Reaper drop. Maru gonna do some cool builds. It's gonna go third command center behind it. Yeah, I think for Maru, defend with the Cyclones, do a Reaper drop is a pretty cute idea. The thing is, this could be very scary for him. If he doesn't see this coming. His own barracks does see a lot of units. He saw that there was uh, no add-on starport and a factory. So he should be anticipating this sort of maneuver. The Banshee is so smart. 
Banshee could clean this whole army up. There's only four Marines that shoot up in it. One Cloakless Banshee can basically beat this entire army. Maru sees it coming as well. He's going to have to evacuate the low ground. Maru playing so smart. Seven Reaper counterattack into Oliveira's main base. Oh, the depot doesn't raise though. But he's got a siege tank there, so it might work out. He actually traps Oliveira inside his base. But so many SCVs already going down so fast. One Cyclone is going to fall. Maru needs to pull that Cyclone back. The Siege Tank took a tank shot. I can't believe Oliveira's tank actually sieged in range. Nice moves. Meanwhile, the Reaper drop on the other side of the map has also done a lot of damage. But Maru a little too slow to save those units. He kills a few of them. But is that going to be enough? And those Marines will out DPS those Reapers. He's going to defend at home. And Oliveira is sieged up in the main base. That Banshee needs to get to work. But it's very difficult. If he can lock onto some of the Marines, the Banshee can clean this. Oh, he goes in, locks onto the Medivac. Nice moves by Maru, but he does take a tank shot. Medivac barely survives in the red. That, of course, Banshee needs to get to work right now. He's lost all of his add-ons. He's losing mining time here as well. The Cyclone getting blasted. The Reaper Hellion cleans it up. The Marine Medivac going to chase off the Banshee and Oliveira. With the reactor first. Pays off in a big way in that game and ties up the series. Maru ain't going to be speedrunning this one. Alright guys, let's go into game three. Looks like we're gonna see some expansion builds. Oliveira in the bottom right of Neo Humanity. Maru in the top left, and they're both gonna go for a one racks expand. Interesting. Uh, this is a map where it can be hard to get through the middle, especially if those rocks collapse. Oliveira says, hey, I went for an SCV scout, might as well block it. Maru responds by pulling a second SCV to build the command center on the high ground. So it's not really delayed, but I actually, I, I really like this for Oliveira, because not only does he get the, oh, I know your one racks expanding. Whereas Maru doesn't have that info. Um, he, he also gets his command center on location. And having to lift that down there is a big nuisance. It really screws you up because you want to make the orbital straight away. But then you have to drop the mule in the main base. While you're floating it down, you miss an SCV or so. And this is, of course, a barracks gas opening. So for Oliveira, it's a very economic opening. You go Reaper, you get the Marine, the factory, then the reactor, then the second gas. Notice that the factory is a lot quicker for Maru. This went down at a minute 55, all off of just a single Reaper. So Maru's done a gas first build, which does get his tech up about 20 seconds to 25 seconds faster. But of course, he's a little lighter on the minerals. His command center is slightly later usually. I say that, his command center is actually only building at the same time. That's odd. You, usually the command set is meant to be slightly faster. Maybe Oliveira just put it down like two, three seconds late. Or maybe Maru's just better at putting those workers on mining. Who knows? Now, Oliveira's been putting back on gas pretty hard with his builds, dropping down to 14 workers out of 16. Um, Maru, I think, putting his on a little later, but we're comparing the gas spending. Both have starports down and uh, reactors up. And there's a Widow Mine building from Maru, which costs 25 more gas. So yep, Maru actually seems to be in the lead on that gas spending or gas mining. And that's, I guess, mostly off the gas first. Reaper goes out the right side. Sorry, getting very technical with my commentary right now. Let's talk about the psychology of this situation. Oliveira has played very standard versus... Uh, I didn't really do anything too crazy versus Reyna or Hero in these previous rounds. And yet here he is in the grand finals once again. Not taking any crazy risks. Not doing any crazy all -ins. He's playing very straight up. And that shows a lot of confidence. Maru's the one who's been trying to force the issue. Oliveira gets a Reaper kill. Yeah, he gets scouted. <clears throat> and Maru once again going for a tank, I thought. But no, he builds a Cyclone. So it looks like just a nice light drop of Marine Hellion Widow Mine. Not a bad way to start things off. Gonna do some light harassment. Keep applying pressure is always a good way to play. But don't overcommit like in the previous games. We see the uh, starport pumping out ravens. We'll see. Does either player go for just one raven and then swap over into Viking production? Or are we going to go for two or three? Whoa, Oliveira's playing a bio build, guys. Oh, look at this. He's not swapping the starport on the reactor. He's getting his barracks up very quickly. Meanwhile, Maru comes in with this drop, scoots around those units on defense duty. Widow Mine can do very well here. Oh, the SCV pool, very well done there by Oliveira. Good Reaper Micro, too. But here we go. Can the Raven shut this down? That SCV! The SCV survived and actually baited the Widow Mine shot. Wow, that's huge. Shuts it down. Only loses the one SCV that took the Widow Mine for the team. Maru needed to focus that SCV down with his other units. Maru gets the worst end of that trade. And Oliveira 
rock solid play looking really good now maru did see the barracks but he might not have mentally processed that so with this build order normally once you're done building ravens you swap the starport onto the reactor and you start making vikings right and that's what we're going to see from maru he's gone a raven and wait maru's doing the same build oh okay maru's also doing the same thing with the starport building extra reactors okay fascinating my Oliveira is a little bit quicker on the 3x. I was gonna, I was like, cool, I can compare these two builds. But it seems like because they've both gone one racks expand, they're both saying, hey, we've both got great economies. We're gonna have quick third bases. Whoever gets like stim, combat shields, lots of marines and medevacs up is gonna be able to control the map and really be the one who's dictating the pace of what's going on. Oliveira drops a scan in the main base. And right now it is one tank advantage for Maru. Maru is also building his fourth and fifth barracks. Uh, whereas that 4th and 5th barracks hasn't come down yet for Oliveira. But Oliveira is getting the 3rd down. Almost identical timing. Maru hasn't made the orbital just yet. Raven looks like it came in. Killed the SCV putting the depot. But the siege tank was in range and cleaned that one up. Good defense by Oliveira so far. He's also got a cyclone on the right side of the map. Oh, Maru. Maru. Careful, buddy. And notice this clever movement. Oliveira hides it. Oh, actually not the best movement. He should have moved that straight to the left. He, sh he might let it get away now. Yeah, he could have got that, but now he's going to have to scan if he wants it. He does scan, and ooh, barely gets it. Still worth it. Very much worth it. Killing a raven, the only raven your opponent has is massive. And you'll notice he's way ahead on the marines right now. He's up about eight marines. 1-1 one, one stim on the way for Maru, but shields is already producing. Oliveira is going to have some really nice marine tank medevac uh, pressure windows where he could get the uh, forward momentum. Fourth and fifth barracks are going down now, about a minute later for Oliveira. You can see for Maru, he's already got the reactors building. It's a very close game, but Oliveira's leading in the supply. He's traded a little bit better in this game by 750 resources. And you can see, because he went for those second and third barracks earlier, his marine count is off the chain. Maru is up three workers and has a slight tank advantage. He's going to have one extra tank pop out in a moment, but it's very small. No one has air control. But Oliveira has a single Raven with a double interference matrix. You can take out half your opponent's tanks and then Stimmy for the winnie. Uh-oh. Maru needs his Marines here, but he sent them across. Maru's trying to do a Stim backstab. That means he could get busted on the front. This is going to turn into chaos very quickly. Here we go. Oh, Maru on sieges and runs away. So smart. So smart by Maru, this positioning. But his Marines, he A moved in the wrong position. Oh no, he A moved in the wrong position there. Those tanks will siege up. If Maru can keep these tanks alive, he will probably win this game if he can keep these tanks up. But oh, he's getting outgunned. The shields was done. I can't believe combat shields being done so quickly has made such a big impact, but it really did here. No combat shields for Maru. Maru tries to lift in the main. Oliveira scrambling to try and defend with SCV Marine, but oh, he's losing a lot of workers. Oh no. Siege tank and a few more Marines pop out. He does do another stim and an A move. So many SCVs getting slaughtered. Maru picks up and rotates. But Siege Tank position on the natural, nearly unbreakable. Maru's going to move to the natural. He needs more damage. He's got to make Oliveira pay for that tank position on the front. These Marines going to get a bunch of SCVs, but Oliveira's on top of it. The Medivacs will go down. A lot more SCVs fall for Oliveira. He is down five workers right now, but he's got three command centers alive. And oh, the tank siege with the master pair for Maru. Holds onto his mineral line for now, but what can Maru do from here? I think he has to keep backstabbing. I think he needs to keep sending drops across the map. He's going to keep trying to lock on there. He does get a Marine with a Cyclone, but that's not really very effective. And losing mining on your natural is terrible. Oh, the SCV is going through the tank line there. Oh, no, 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 no. The lift on the command center seemed good, but he needed to hide those SCVs up above it. Going to go for that double drop counterattack like I talked about. Backstabbing seems to be the only way to get back in this game. Funnily enough, Oliveira scans. He sees no Marines there, and he unseages and goes home. Oh, he, no, he's got to go. He's got to go. But then he turns around. I guess he's decided his rally should be enough units to defend. These units are going to stay out here. Oh, so Oliveira is splitting. He knows there's units coming across, and he's got plenty of units to defend. And he's also going to go in for another push on the front at the same time and try to deny that base. Command Center has landed. Maru's going to move down and try to get position. Oliver is not going to let him. There's no way Maru's drop is effective here. There's too many Marines there. Maru needs to get that drop out of there. Liberator defense. Very good for Maru. Very nice. And he gets the drop in. He does actually get a few SCVs, but Oliver is there with plenty of Marines to answer that. Equal upgrades. And it seems like the SCVs do have to get pulled one more time. Oliveira takes a few more SCV losses, but cleans up one of the medevacs. 
On the other side, we've got the siege tank from Maru, who's actually in range, but he doesn't actually have vision there, and he loses the tank due to Oliveira's scans. If the Marines can kill the Liberators, that'll be good. Medevac should be picking those siege tanks up, and it does indeed do so. He can get in range of the starports, maybe even drop these tanks on the high ground. Oliveira working those angles like a beast. Maru with the counter drop gets the siege tank on the third, but the Drilly Boys assemble. They shout, taste my drill, as they march into battle. The non-combatants turning the tide in that one. Siege tanks are going to be moved out of that lib zone once more. He's being so annoying. And if he can blast them with the, the tanks on the low ground and the Marines on the high ground, it's going to be a costly trade for Maru. But Maru finally breaks free of this position. And he is down 14 workers. He's also not got his 2-2 started versus 2-2 on the way. Oliveira's on 54 workers. Maru's on 41. Maru also lost his reactor on the starport. But he's going to repair the lib, use it to harass. I think Maru needs to keep multitasking. I think his best bet is turtle at home with your tanks and keep doing small marine and liberator drop harassments. Try to get in there and just get mistakes out of Oliveira. Remember, Maru's the favorite to win this. Massive, massive favorite. The odds were insane going into this grand finals. Even though Oliveira had momentum, Maru just 3 0 at Ragnarok in a one sided semi finals. So Maru should be the one who has less has a bit more pressure on him. Oliveira fighting does get a snipe on the third command center. Maru looks like he will be able to get the same. Both players trading third bases. Who's going to come out on top? Oliveira thrusts into the tank line and breaks it. Maru does not have enough numbers to defend his base. Meanwhile, Oliveira catches the unsiege on the front, takes out the two tanks. One of the medevacs goes down to the turret. He does take out the tanks. But Maru taps, realizing he cannot deal with such a big blob of units at his base. No answer to that, and he's probably not going to be able to break the production himself with just a handful of Marines and Medivacs. Maru taps out. All right, well, that last game was utter chaos from start to finish, but this man is holding his own against the greatest Terran player in the world and the greatest Terran of all time. Oliveira down here, though, making a name for himself, putting up a fight. Maru, though, in the top left side, still a big favorite in this series. I think losing that initial drop, diving all the way into the back of the mineral line was a really bad call. If your opponent's not really out on the map, diving all the way back into the rear of their mineral line and overcommitting is, is generally not a good idea. What you want to do is you want to look for some small amounts of damage you can get, see, what, and then just get out. Preserving the units is most important. If your opponent is counterattacking you, you go for broke. You dive in the mineral line. But that first drop being thrown away did kind of tilt the numbers in Oliveira's advantage for the rest of that early game. Not to mention, Oliveira, I remember, blocked the expansion, had the one racks expand, which is also a very good build order as well. And Oliveira here trying to play his best. Of course, this is played at the end of the round of, round of eight, all played in one day, round of eight, and the semis and the finals. So Maru has already uh, defeated his round of eight opponent, who I'm actually forgetting right now. Who did Maru play in the round of eight? Um, obviously Oliveira took out Hero Marine yesterday, then took out Rainer with a reversal and Hero earlier today. Maru took out Solar in the round of eight, three to one. And uh, that was a pretty solid series from, I do think Solar kind of threw some situations where it looked like he was about to get the advantage and took some bad fights, but Maru looked good there. He looked dominating in his 3-0 over Ragnarok. It has been not the longest day of games. A lot of the games were reasonably quick. So it wasn't like a grueling 12-hour day of games, but uh, definitely the players are feeling the pressure. You're on stage for match after match. You're in this alien environment. It takes something out of you, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see who can perform when they've got the difference between $150,000 first place and I believe $70,000 second place. It's such an important match, and I mean, it's who can step up and perform under pressure, and who's going to get taken out of the moment and start kind of obsessing over, oh... I might be world champion, I might be world champion, and then freak themselves out. Uh, that's something a lot of players in competition do get a bit ahead of themselves, and they, they start thinking about, wow, this is the biggest result in my career. And for either, either player, um, Maru, a lot of people, they get surprised and angry when I say this, but he's never been in the finals of a world championship. Um, he hasn't, unless you count WESG. And I actually had someone recently said, I can't believe you don't count WESG. How dare you? We've always had one major world championship for the year each year. You can't have more than one world championship, guys. Don't get me wrong. WSG was a premier tournament. He's won a lot of GSLs, big premier tournaments. Maru is one of the greatest players of all time. But you only have one world championship. That was BlizzCon. 2019 was the last one. And then it became Katowice. So 
it's one of those things Maru's never made it to the finals of Katowice even before it was the main tournament. He's never made it to the finals of a BlizzCon. And in fact, even in 2018 when he was dominating, he did fall out in the round of 16. So for him to be here on this stage, this is a momentous moment where he can change the course of his career to not just be the greatest GSL player of all time, he can also become simply the, the potentially the greatest player of all time. I mean, there will be people absolutely saying, hey man, you add the dominance over Korea to winning a world championship as well. And I mean, come on, you can't argue with that. He's gonna go for the tank drop one more time as he moves out. Oliveira's three Reapers intercept the two, but Maru with a quick response doesn't lose one. The Hellion! Oh, Oliveira comes in with the Hellion from the other angle and gets the tap on it. And he can actually backstab here. Ooh, clever move. There is a Cyclone popping out though, so that should be able to handle it. Great handling by Maru, but... Oh, Maru's so distracted, he flies right into the Cyclone! And the Medivac's gonna go down! Big mistakes for Maru. Great micro by Oliveira. I can't believe it. Maru got so distracted with the micro that he's gonna lose this entire push. That's gonna get shut down. Can he at least get the Cyclone? The answer is no. His Reapers get cleaned up. Looks like Oliveira did get seven worker kills and shut down the pressure. Oh my lord, Maru. Should've just told that to unload at the front or something but he's multitasking, failing him there, clearly focusing on that uh, interaction on that side of the map a bit too much, trying to defend at home, flies right into the cyclone and makes a disgusting mistake, something that is so uncharacteristic. He's now gonna try and push forwards, but I mean, he's already lost con control of this game. If he wants to do anything, maybe land Vikings in the main. I guess that's not a bad idea, but he loses a heli in there. The Vikings are gonna try and fly in and probably land in that mineral line. Not a bad move. He could get some worker kills, but doesn't want to risk losing the Vikings, so he ends up pulling back. Maru builds a third command center on location. Maru needs to play the cleanest game he's ever played now over the next few minutes. He's absolutely capable of stabilizing from here, but he's got to keep it clean because there's tanks, there's Vikings pumping. Notice Oliveira is not using the starport to build add-ons for that big bio explosion this game, but he's actually just going to be going for double Viking production. I guess it's only when you have the one racks expand, you have that big economic boost that people like to rush up in that regard now. Oliveira with a nice quick mass repair, not going to lose any SCVs here at first. Finally, the Reaper changes targets, does get one. Cyclone will take out that Reaper. And only one SCV going down, not too bad. Looks like Oliveira also wants to build the third on location. If you're planning to be aggressive, it's a risky move, but you know, if you're in your opponent's face, they can't really punish this very easily. Cyclone's going to stumble into the middle of the map. Here comes Oliveira with a three tank, four Viking, one Cyclone, and one Raven push. Marine will spot this. What do we have on the defense? A couple of tanks, a couple of Marines, a Raven, and a Viking. But being outnumbered in the Vikings is the big issue. When these two extra Vikings rally in, Oliveira has four versus two Vikings. He's got the air advantage. Maru's trying to get out of here. He has to pull SCVs. He has to pull SCVs right now or he's going to get run over. Maru needs to pull the boys. The only chance of holding this is pulling the boys, but he doesn't do it. He's losing the Viking fight. He loses a tank on the low ground. He's going to pull the rest of his units out. Oliveira goes for the double auto turret there. The Viking tank comes in. One interference matrix lands, but look at that focus fire. Oliveira focusing Maru's tanks, knowing they're the most important units. The Vikings are going to land. The Cyclone goes down and Maru gets taken out there. Oliveira is large and in charge. And he is all over Maru right now. He's playing a solid game and every mistake Maru makes is getting capitalized upon. All right, guys. Well, we're going into game number five. Oliveira gonna go for a one racks expand again. He's going for an SCV scout. Meanwhile, Maru in the bottom left side is going double gas and an SCV scout. The SCVs phase right through each other there. And uh, this is interesting. What does Maru, or how does Maru react? I always feel like if you're doing Maru's build and you scout the one Rex expand, you're actually in a pretty good position because, I mean, you could do the tank drop pretty effective. It's pretty hard for Oliveira to stop that if he doesn't get perfectly positioned. But Maru doesn't block the command center. So already slight mistake there. If he blocked that CC, that would have been a much better advantage for him. And he has to just head home. Um, the main trick is you don't usually want to go three Reaper, two Hellion. Like you can, and just basically cross your finger that Oliveira is greedy, but usually the player in Oliveira's shoes will build a bunker um, to, to defend anything that comes their way. Reaper, Marine. I mean, actually that's kind of old school. We haven't seen that as much lately, but anyways. Maru goes Reactor, Factory. Notice he's got two workers on one gas, one on the other. Factory goes down for Oliveira about 30 seconds later. He's just camping there. 
command center will be about 40 seconds behind as is standard with the double gas build but you're always going to have more factory units more starport units because this is ready so much earlier interestingly maru is going for the hellion and indeed Oliveira is playing safe with that bunker so reaper marine and bunker into reactor now because it's a big map i think this is okay for Oliveira, but on small maps if they build two reapers and just jump in your main right now you can't really fight it with one reaper and one marine you could lose a few scvs the problem is that this factory is so far to the right you need to jump up the cliff and go very deep into Oliveira's territory to try to go after these SCVs and that means there's a good chance you get stuck there. Already going straight to Marines, factory with the tech lab and the starport. This is the right play for Maru preparing for that next step. The question is do we see a siege tank and a medevac or do we see ravens and cyclones? Siege tank starts up. I mean Maru's been doing the same thing almost every game though. This has been a big weakness of Maru at some points in his career. In 2018, he did the exact same TVZ build for an entire GSL run, um, where he always did 2-1-1 into a double tank, three barracks uh, follow-up push. Every single game. Every TVZ. Even when the Zergs knew it was coming. And it feels like here against Oliveira, he's like, me do tank medevac. Me do tank medevac. Yeah, it was one or two games where he did a marine drop, but... It's a lot of the same push over and over again. And one of the general rules of StarCraft is randomize your play because if your opponent knows what to expect, they can blindly prepare. And how do you do that? You build a Viking. You don't go for a Raven, you get a Viking out. You immediately start building your own siege tanks as well because they're going to be way better in terms of raw stats than a Cyclone. And the problem with the Cyclone is if you don't lock on the Medevac, they just pick up the unit you're locked onto, drop it again, and your lock-on does nothing. The Cyclone without the lock-on is bad. So the thing is, if you just skip the Cyclone here, you're in a pretty good spot as Oliveira, and he's going to be able to already get a tank shot off. Reaper goes down, and Oliveira with the Viking there. Oh, does he find it? Does he find it? Yeah, he does. And Maru has to get out of there. Now, luckily, Maru doesn't overcommit this time. So he hasn't actually put himself in a, in, in, in a really bad position. He loses a Reaper, keeps his units alive. He can still hang around and threaten and scare Oliveira, right? But remember, Oliveira had the quicker expansion. He should be dropping a third command center in a moment as well. Maru already dropping his third on location. Down 3-1. Remember, Maru only has one life. He needs to win this game and two more games after it to win this series. Now, these tanks are sieging up there. Maru just going to back off. He doesn't want to take any risks, and I think this is wise threaten freak him out you've distracted him from putting his command center down and then just back off home don't sit there and give him a fight that you're not ready to take now the raven is only now popping out for Oliveira. massive delay on that whereas of course the raven for maru is already on the field and maru is going reactor oh okay this is interesting this is very interesting because Oliveira scans and sees oh you're trying to get to stim three racks you're building all these reactor add-ons which means you're not building Vikings or Ravens. I'm building two Ravens. I'm keeping up my tank production. So this might tell Oliveira that, hey, if I push with four siege tanks, two Ravens, I might be able to kill you because you're just not going to have any air units producing out of the starport, right? I'm going to be able to interfere in Matrix more units. I also had a greedier opening, so I have a few more Marines than you. And we'll see how that plays out. Oh, nice pick off here for Maru. Gets a Hellion. That's always good value. Just lowering the hit points available in this army is always nice. And uh, where is Maru's army? Maru might have to... I think if he preemptively pulls SCVs, he can crush this. I think if Oliveira overcommits here, because it's been spotted so far ahead of time, I do think Maru can hold this. Um, not a bad call to pressure, but he's adding barracks, adding eBays, all this stuff behind it. It's not 100% committed, and I think Oliveira makes the wise call here to back off. Maru still looking for pickoffs with that Cyclone. Gets... Ooh, doesn't quite get the Marine. Really good movement. For Maru. He's going to make sure he sieges a bit further forward, though. Damage is a Raven, but scan not enough to actually confirm the kill. Those Ravens there looking very menacing. Does he stay unseaged? Oh, he's going to pre siege, and he does actually cover the edge there. I think Maru should be all right here. What's the Viking count? One Viking for. Okay, Oliver is building Vikings, whereas it's Medivacs for Maru. So Maru's going to send a uh, Stim drop across the map, maybe. He's got Stim up earlier. His 1 1 will be done. I actually think this plays out pretty well for Maru. Only one tank able to siege his base is not too bad. Oliveira, is he shoving? Oh, Oliveira is going for it. Maru needs to pull the boys. He's got to pull the boys. He does stim forwards, and I think this might be an overcommitment for Oliveira. He does get a few decent tank shots, but at the end of the day, I think that's a victory for Maru. But hey, one tank still stands. 
Maru's gonna shove here. Oh, Oliveira's gonna try and snipe those low hit point tanks. He gets two of them. Oh, he almost gets a third, but Maru with the hot pickup says, no, 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 naughty boy. He's gonna do some hot pickups, some hot drops, and oh, tech survives on one hit point, another one on 15. He does lose a bunch of workers, though. 10 workers have gone down, despite that. Maru only down three workers. Maru did a very good hold there. And he's now building some Vikings. He's getting an armory, which will allow him to keep up that upgrade advantage. He's also got to drop his gases. He's going to have to take all three gases or he'll never be able to afford 2-2 two, two in tank production for the rest of this game. Um, I think Maru's best bet is probably to slide a few drops across the map, start dropping Oliveira. Oliveira, on the other hand, I mean, he can't be too unhappy with the trade. You can see the units lost tabs a bit in Maru's favor, but you know, you got your third up. You have been producing okay and your stim's done. Your 1-1 one, one and your shields will catch up in the near future, but... Not much map vision for him, and Maru looking to get a siege position on the south side. Could maybe get in range of just this gas geyser. Even killing a single gas, applying a little bit of pressure is always a nice way to get the game going back in your favor. Scan, and of course Oliveira counter scans, assuming there's a reason you're scanning there. Looks like those marines, I don't, I don't agree with that marine stim for Maru. It's two tanks and a pack of marines there. Maru committing to a fight that doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Leading units into Oliveira for no good reason there. And a few SCVs do go down for Oliveira, but he's going to take out the gas wheel, Maru. Oh, well, actually, Oliveira could just repair that if he chooses to. Maru being very cavalier in these fights. I'd like to see Maru just turtle up in macro, but remember, Maru is known for being a god at late game and then choosing to not play late game. I really do believe that he's going to be better than Oliveira if it goes late enough, though. The Marines marching on forward, still getting some good pressure. Unfortunately, Oliveira let that gas mine uh, burn down. Fourth Command Center is up a little bit earlier for him. And 2-2 two, two upgrades. Similarly timed, Oliveira is what? 25 seconds behind on plus two attack. Does forget his plus two armor for now. He's very low on gas. But we've got the second factory building on the tech lab. Barracks moves over and builds itself a reactor. So Maru's getting well set up on that four base situation and building on location. Maru's doing very, very well in terms of that, but he doesn't have a significant unit advantage. He's up about 16 Marines. The other numbers are very even. It's all about those Marinas, and they're going to come in here. Only three tanks for Oliveira, and Oliveira goes for the counterattack, the mad lad, the crazy guy that he is. You know what? A few SCVs pulled, but not too many. If he can get big damage with his Marine run by, maybe this works out crazy choice to not just stim those marines into help on the defense but it pays off apparently he had just enough siege tanks to hold on and Oliveira does get eight scvs there for the seven that he just lost so you know what i think he's okay with that choice the scv viking marine coming over more scvs are going down here maru maybe should have been a little bit more patient waited for just a handful more marines to pop from the production he loses 16 workers and he's got the fourth up on location but losing those workers a little bit of a bummer did look like Oliveira was almost going to get broken, but this one, Hero Siege Tank with 10 kills, that was the big reason why he was able to hold on there. All right, turrets there, fourth base down the bottom. Second factory going down for Oliveira up in the main as well. I'm surprised he's not doing the swappity swap on that factory, but maybe a little bit nervous in this action packed game. Both players spamming it out at 400 APM average, very evenly matched in terms of the speed of play. And what else have we got going? The plus two armor did get remembered for Oliveira, by the way. Viking count, let's take a check in. Two Vikings each, no one's really contesting the skies, but Oliveira does power up two Vikings at a time versus only one building right now for Maru. And a big Marine run by on the north, but a tank and a planetary easily will hold that. And Maru going for his own Marine run by on the bottom. But there is a tank and a rally of marines to defend. So both sides will be blocked here. Could kill the sensor tower and run away. Chooses to just chill for now. Especially with those two tanks on the bottom. Maru's got a fifth command center. Maru's looking well set up for a macro game. And he can settle into this stage of the game where he is heavily favored. Oliveira plays good, get good late game. But there's a difference between good late game and the greatest late game player of all time. Maru is so damned good at the late game. He basically invented Raven play, but he's outnumbered here. He does have Vikings though. Tanks coming from the left as well. Works out okay. 2-2 two, two upgrades on both sides. Siege tanks do come forward. Very good pullback by Maru. Oliveira has so many Marines though, but they get blasted. Good fight for Maru. He did lose a fair few Marines. And the Vikings do push him back, but he got some great volleys on the Marines. And you can see, of course, 
the blood of a lot of Olivera's soldiers left there. Olivera is down in the units lost, about 700, 800 resources. Does have the quicker 3 3 though. Maru does remember plus 3 attack. Doesn't have the money for plus 3 just yet. He's got enough sitting around now. And there we go. It does actually start up as well. Neither player has gone for extra star ports just yet. Curious to see if Ravens or Viking Lib Control is more of a focus for these guys. Maru accidentally attacking his own medevac there for a moment. Slight mistake, but not the end of the world. Viking count still very low and quite similar. Oliveira will take the lead on that though. He's going to be building them two at a time. It's not there just yet. Maru's up four siege tanks, seven marines. He has the better army. He's got more command centers building earlier. Oliveira is waiting for a command center to float out, but oh, he pulls back just before it gets there. That's unfortunate. Oh, he's going back. He's looking for it. Nope, nope. Goes in, goes out, goes in, goes out. Oliveira looking a little bit twitchy right now. He sees this giant push from Maru. Maru's going to get rid of the sensor towers. But that looks like it's about all he's going to get for now. Oh, he's going to try and doom drop the main. That's almost pure siege tank. There's only four marines in that drop. Oh, oh, it's just a movement. It's a movement ability. Oh, Maru should be scanning to kill that siege tank. Where's Maru's scan right now? The marines came in and killed a bunch of his SCVs. They're going to get the command center. And the counter drop for Oliveira. Counter drops marines on that. Clears all those siege tanks out while Oliveira's Vikings punish and Maru. Gets a little bit excited there, and Oliveira slaps that one down. Very nice play there. Look at that. 11 siege tanks have gone down for nine. Maru was ahead in that tank killed count, and way ahead in the tank count going into that fight. Now he's way down at half the siege tanks. He's rebuilding them two at a time and making plus three vehicle weapons. But Oliveira is making plus two vehicle weapons himself. He has not forgotten these upgrades. Maru just tried to force the issue a little bit too hard. If he had maybe eight more Marines unloaded, he could have shot down the medevac. That was always going to be tough. Oliveira counter-thrusting. Maru doesn't know that's army there. That army is there. He could get caught. Maru's got to be careful. He sees it now. And the movement on this map is really interesting. Look at the army count. Plus 20 Marines for Maru. Down five siege tanks. He's got to keep that tank production up, but only one factory building right now. Maru needs to keep building tanks, and he also needs a few more depots. Right now, he does not have max supply available. Maru's going three starports. He's building Vikings, so he's thinking about a transition. I believe that's going to be Ravens. Second and third starport already building a tech lab and a reactor. Oliveira is going to go more Viking focused with a few Ravens sprink sprinkled in there. And it's going to transform into that focus. Seven tanks first, 12. Oliveira has more safety in that regard. Whereas it seems like Maru's got more marines that could stim in for the winnie. Stim for the win. Raven starts up for Oliveira. Remember they do build faster. Only 34 seconds each. Only cost 150 gas each these days as well. Interference matrix as good as it's always been. anti armor missile slightly worse as is the auto turret. Ooh, good siege from Maru. Gets two siege tanks. But looks like he does lose one of his own. Damaging a third of Oliveira but not able to take it out. Oliveira still has tanks down the bottom. He's got plenty of tanks to cover all these bases. I feel like if Oliveira can once again get around and snipe this command center before it morphs into a planetary, that would be really cool. Because Maru was ahead on the base count significantly, but sniping the fifth has kept it even. Maru is ahead on the workers by 10, but keep in mind that means his army's smaller. He's going building armor, high sec auto tracking, upgrades which have not been made for Oliveira yet. He's also going to go double Raven production now and a lot more command centers, as well as that second armory, which will allow him to make armor, plating, and ship weapons at the same time. Maru's going to drop to the north. He sees the turrets aren't ready, but he gets scanned, and he realizes that maybe not the best move. Those tanks could unsiege, but Oliveira, a little slow to react. He's going to try and unload on this before the turrets finish. Maru should have probably just beeline straight towards it. He gets three tanks, but loses two full medevacs worth of marines for it. Oliveira's going to try and thrust down the bottom, but these sensor towers are, of course, spotting him well ahead of time. I think going up the guts might be the play, but no, there's tanks there. Watch out for these tanks. He's going to stumble into that tank line on the left side, potentially, but oh, he only takes one shot from it. Still two shots from that tank on the left side, enough to scare him back for now. Maru is going three Ravens at a time, but he's down four Vikings. We've also got advanced ballistics, so range liberators and Vikings and the occasional Raven sprinkled in for Oliveira. Fascinating play for him. What a complicated army. Just a few interference matrixes, but a lot of Viking superiority and the libs as well. You can see Maru starting ship weapons a little earlier. They're both going into vehicle plating. It's going to be evenly matched in the skies. Let's check the command centers to see how the infrastructure is going. Four orbitals for Maru, only three for Oliveira. And Oliveira doesn't have that many command centers either. 
Like, he's got one command center building. I, I really think Oliveira needs a lot more command centers, or he's just not going to have the scans and the mules to compete in late game. This is looking like a, a situation where Maru adding more command centers will be much better set up for the late game. But right now, even Marine Count, two more tanks for Oliveira. Oliveira has five more Vikings and a Liberator with range coming out. So it's all about that Viking count. Uh, Maru needs to trade away some units, maybe some SCVs, and replace them with Vikings. Whoever wins this next Viking fight probably can uh, can take a base out of the opponent. Here we go. Anti-armor missile goes down. Nice move there. That does knock two armor off these units, of course, guys. And you can see the big Viking battle, but Oliveira had the numbers advantage from the start. Even with the slower anti-armor missile himself, his Liberator tank can now push in. Maru, how many starports has he got? He's got six starports, but he's only building three Vikings. Maru needs to hold that Viking key down, but he's not. He's under so much pressure. Maru not using his starports, and his Vikings are not able to contest the skies. Neither are the Marines. The tanks and the Liberators are pushing in. He's trying to siege back in every angle to slow the advance, but Oliveira systematically punishing him pushing into this territory. Still got eight Vikings on the front. Maru now building seven Vikings at a time. He's starting to use all six starports. He has to get back in control of that air. If he can't get control of the air, he's going to lose all of his tanks. He's down to just three right now. Even if he wins the air, at this point, he's lost the tanks and he's lost this position. He should have given this base up. Maru needed to give this base up. This is a disaster for Maru. The Marines come in, take out that siege tank, and Oliveira has driven a wedge between the bases. Maru's economy in the bottom right is isolated. He can split a Liberator off and deny the entire mining in the bottom right side of the map. Maru in a desperate situation now, holding the Viking tank key down, trying to replenish. But you must be careful. If you swap to static kind of Viking tank focus play, you must have the Viking advantage. The moment you lose a big air fight, you are in the doo-doo because you cannot win a positional battle then the siege tanks of the opponent will be able to march forward, especially with the range lib addition that's been so clever. You can see the SCVs all hiding there. He tries to bring his Vikings down to deal with that. But look at the intercept. Oliveira keeps his Liberator alive. And that's a dead command center as well. Those Marines could go after those Vikings, but he doesn't want to risk going to range of that seven range planetary fortress. Looks like the planetary will go down. The SCVs have to migrate to the bottom right side. It might be time for a counter thrust for Maru. Surprised he hasn't tried it already. Oliveira looks like he's got a pretty good spready of tanks across his bases, though, not providing many angles of opportunity for Maru. Maru still has a lot of bases. As long as he stays calm here, he's by no means out of this game. His production is intact. He's now got a Viking advantage, but he's very low on tanks, and I love the double drop in the main. Interference Matrix there is very cute. Looks like Oliveira will lose one Siege tank, but maybe only one. Good pullback. The double drop in the main sniping add-ons is massive. I said his production was intact. Well, he loses a bunch of that now. And Oliveira not overcommitting at all. He's also going to move this army to the bottom right. And those tanks are going to eliminate a third base. This Siege tank will go down, but still very awkward for Oliveira, uh, for Maru right now as his bases go down. Oliveira accidentally sieged the tank in range, but four tanks can still take care of that base. Maru thinking about counterattacking with 60 Marines right now. It's a big Marine force, very mobile. Oliveira, though, look at the tank spread. He's got four tanks there. He's got two tanks up the north. Very hard to break these positions unless your Raven's interference matrix everything. He has enough Ravens to do that. It's time to go for the production. If Maru shoves the production, he wins this game. I actually think Oliveira's left too big of an opening, but he's scrambling back. Maybe not. He might get back in time. The tank's trying to siege. Interference matrix is trying to come out but look at that the tanks are sieged on every angle and Oliveira gets back <clears throat> just in time does he though tanks on the left side being very annoying the marines shove up the choke point they get a pretty good position Maru getting some good tank shots from the low ground as well oh Oliveira he committed too much of the army to the flank and he left himself open in the middle the Ravens getting some good value there but big Viking advantage for Oliveira I don't think you can win this fight as Maru he's way down in Vikings overall on this map he's going to try and fight auto turrets might help out for Maru he could win this fight with the Ravens tanking and dropping auto turrets a little bit he's got to win the fight though auto turrets need to go down for Maru they would win this fight he's got one marine in there Maru missing a big opportunity to win the air fight there was no tank coverage on the ground only one tank there he could have won that air fight and continued to hold this position. 
but now he's giving up a wedge between the bases of his opponent. He will move north and get some more damage. He's still in a great dictating position here. But look at that. Oliveira is going to move out with the counter drop. Unload on that tank to clear it up. He's going to evacuate that command center and SCVs. His tank count is so low, though. Is Oliveira here? He's going to try and stim forward, though. Whoa! But then he goes in and then pulls back. This is a very awkward position for both sides. Maru doesn't need to push forward though he can push north and deny more bases the problem is that those liberators now that he lost the air fight the liberators are ruining him i do think if he dropped auto turrets he would have been good but you got to realize i'm being critical of maru maru doesn't see what we could see he probably thought there was a few tanks sieged just in the fog that would have shot those auto turrets down instantly so let's be fair to maru he probably was making uh, what i don't know eight times out of ten was the right decision it's just it didn't happen to be the right one then that's how StarCraft works. Limited information makes things difficult. Only three orbitals on both sides, which means they have very limited vision. Maru comes in, kills a command center. Nope, nice cancel at the last second for Oliveira. Oliveira's building command centers all over the map, as is Maru. But they don't have a lot of orbitals or planetaries to stabilize in these positions. Maru's committing his whole army across the map. The same mistake that he just punished Oliveira for. Now he makes the same mistake. Oliveira quick to punish and is going to dive straight into the production. And unlike Oliveira, who is just home in time to defend it, Maru has nothing here to defend his army scrambling back he has a lot of ravens maybe they can break it but my god he's gonna lose all his production the libs even sieging right where he would want to put his tanks on the low ground to try and break this push he can't get out at all the liberators are gonna siege on these tanks as they try to come back nice interference matrixes though maru he takes what should have been an unbreakable position and the ravens say no 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 unbreakable is my middle name I break the unbreakable. That is the power of the Ravens. They can take those tank positions out, interference matrixes, and keeps himself alive. But my god, at what cost? He may have killed another one of Oliveira's command centers, but look at the supply. He's down 40 workers. He's down 30 army supply. Oliveira's got a Remax coming out already. He's going to try and take the top left side of the map. He's got a base mining there, a base mining there. If he spreads his workers down to this base, Oliveira's income is actually insane right now. Uh, whereas Maru's got next to no mining. Another Liberator was denying mining in the top left side of the map at the same time down in the bottom. He's got two command centers, but all he's got is a few mules dropping. Remember, the Iron Bank was never made in this game. There is only three three orbitals for both sides so there's no mass mule drop to keep your economy going maru loses a command center Oliveira secures a new fresh base in the top left his 67 workers plus mules will give him a very solid income advantage and right now you'll say oh but maru's good guys he just dropped all of his mules on this base when those expire his income is going to drop to like maybe 2,000 at most minerals a minute, probably about 1,600, whereas Oliveira will be sitting pretty on 3,000 once he gets that top left base mining. Uh, this is a very hard situation for Maru. He's still got a good army though, 12 tanks, so he's got the tank advantage. He's got three ravens, but I think the Viking lib is the way to counter a superior tank force, right? You win the Viking fight, your lib siege, the tanks are no longer the fantastic units you want them to be. Building armor, high sec auto tracking, finally being upgraded for Oliveri. He did forget those for a bit longer. And Liberator will siege up that bottom base. Viking will take it out. But even two SCVs is meaningful in this game. Maru's economy is small. Maru working back towards a max out. He's out here. The tank siege up in time. Remember that lack of orbitals and the lack of economy. Maru's using so many scans, dropping mules instead. Oh, Maru! A bit of mispathing there. His tanks get caught out. And his marines are trapped behind his siege tanks. Oh, Oliveira just sees the opportunity and jumps on top. His tank siege, his liberated siege, his Vikings annihilate the air. And even though Oliveira's marines went down, that was a terrible fumbling position for Maru. The moment you fumble, Oliveira snatches it up and grabs the victory. In a historic moment, he comes in as the massive underdog in three series in a row. And he beats the best Zerg, Terran, and Protoss players in the game. And that is how you win a championship. This is not just a lucky bracket lineup where the best players got eliminated for him. This was Oliveira showing that he is a ridiculously talented player. And for once, he showed up to a tournament and didn't panic. He brought his A-game under pressure. And he is the most surprising, most passionate world champion we may have ever seen. GG, well played.